Okay, so you've just seen him going around the arena. He's just going down the road now. He's only got a piece of rubber in his mouth and he's going along on a slack rein, keeping a straight line. If I want to stop him, whoa! Stand still. Walk. Walk. Come on. Walk. Boy. I walk when he's told. I want to just bring him onto this hill here and let him just hold it so I won't use the brakes, in other words, to assist. I'll let the horse hold it back, which proves he's obviously answering what I'm asking him to do. I try never to tell him, I always ask them first, you know, this is what I want you to do, and give them every chance to respond. Walk, so he's holding this down there, all the weight on his quarters, so there's me on here, there's obviously three the other trainers on here, um, and he's holding it back, you can see the bridge pushing into him, and we're not using any brakes. So I'm going to ask him to stop on here and hold it now, whoa! And he'll hold it there like that. Um, he's brushing a little bit behind, so we've got brushing boots on him. Nothing serious, but uh, what's it? If we're having trouble keeping weight on him. I mean, you know, we're doing our best we possibly can. Um, and he's made lots and lots of progress. Or in my opinion, it's up to you to make that decision. Walk on. Uh, he's going down there on the slack rein walk when you're told. Oh, he definitely wants that. If he doesn't, if you look at this horse, I'm telling you, I know you've been around it a long time, I'm not telling you, but I'm saying the only way to look at a horse is it's the motive power, i.e. it's the engine. Everything else is down to you to complete control of that horse. Now some horses you could argue and they know what to do, but you might not want them to do it at that point, might you? So they might well know that they're going to turn left into this gate. They might well know in the obstacle that they're going to come out because there's a wall in front of him. So they know they're going to go that way or that way. So what I'm saying is but it's not, not for them to make a decision. Walk when you're told. So he's got to do it when he's told, how he's told, if he's told. So and that's been his problem. He's been in charge of anybody that's been around him. Now, um, no disrespect to you in any way or anybody else. So there you are. Set him off there, could you see? There was a car coming up behind. You see the puddles we just passed, he splashed the puddle. I mean he's back and like you know, but I didn't holler and shout, I didn't scream, I didn't yank the reins, I didn't pull on his mouth, I just checked him gently and he's back. So you've got to have the nerve to sit up here behind horse like this and um what's it? But you know, if we're not through, he's not done training yet, he's on his way, I'll bring him right over to this motor car like that, can you see, look, and he's fine, and he, all he's got is a soft piece of rubber in his mouth, now people say to me, oh you can't drive horse in a piece of rubber, well, I do it every day, and all different types of horses, so, I want you to understand there's a speed limit along here, <laughs> <laughs> all right mate, <laughs> no, he's just walking along there nice, he's not attempted to go or anything like that, but he has attempted to go several times with me. It's, I've been able to stop him, talk to him and like that, but I have big doubts about the horse, I mean I said to you that I'd break him, put him in, get him in the game. And he'll be going quiet in a rubber bit. Well, surely this must prove that he's doing it. You know? um, so, I'm not saying anything to him now, you know, he's talking, but I'm not asking him steady. But can you see the traces going slack? And he's holding this back without being asked to. Now, you can say, well, he should do it, he's age, he should learn that. Well, coming out of all him, let me tell you, they never had to stop anything because he's as flat as a billiard table. him now, he's going down nice, got an old bin here that's not been out before, so he's got his ears pricked towards him, but I'll bring him over there, I don't 
I want him jumping across the road, but I'm not pulling him, I'm not shouting at him, I'm not bullying him. And he's come past here, lovely, he's now out of his line of sight and he's perfectly happy. And I'll keep saying to everybody, every horse is an individual. And everybody's saying it now, but what you've got to do, you've got to understand it. It's not a case of, you've got to understand when I say every horse is an individual. And you cannot put them into categories, and as soon as you say, oh, yeah, he's of that type, well, you know, that's when someone says that to me, then they just will take it somewhere else to get it trained. Because obviously, when you come out with these horses that have got problems, you put your life in your hands. Um, so, I know we're experienced, and you know, obviously, our records show we know what we're doing. When I say something, I don't say it for my pleasure. I'm telling you because it's it's fact. This horse takes some driving. Now, anyone looking at it now and say, "Well, no, nah, it's simple. Look, all you got is a bit of rubber in his mouth, and it's going up there like that." But what he's done over the time he's been here, he's not been allowed to get away with anything. So, all right, what do I mean by that? So, what I mean is, you're leading him out the stable, and he decides he's going to walk in front of you. Well, we'll spend an hour or all morning if necessary taking him back to his stable leading him out again until when you stop he stops and he stops a pace behind you he doesn't make any attempt to come past no voice command nothing no touching the rope he just knows he's not to walk past now you don't get that with smacking them and whacking them that's just stupid you do that by having the patience to make them understand you will not tolerate it now children are exactly the same if you say to them right you're grounded for a week then you've got to if you've said that that's what's got to happen and people don't do that they give in and the next night the kids are out playing um, or you know you're not going out you're not going to do this you're not going to do that and it's exactly the same with horses it's no different you've got to if you if you set off that's why with this old particular horse here, we're out first thing, well not first thing, but we're out in the morning, you know, basically it's about lunchtime now actually, but we're out now, because if we've got to go all day, the rest of this day, until it gets dark, that's what we'll do, but he will do what I want, but we will not force him, we will not smack him, we will not beat him, we will not put bloody great Liverpool bit in him with a curb chain on, and when someone says to me, oh yes, but that's a driving bit, that's what you have to have, that's a load of nonsense. What you want to do is put the, hold your hand up like that with your thumb up, put the bit here and the curb chain underneath and then just turn it a little bit because this part of your arm here represents very well the jaws. Got bone here, bone there. That's very similar to the jaws or as near as you'll get on your body to the jaws of a horse. Well, you put that bit on there, bit there when you've got your thumb up, the bit laying there, curb chain underneath and give it a little twist. It'll bring tears to your eyes. So when people say, oh, you know, he's, uh, responsive, he's responsive to the pain inflicted by the bit. Now, whether anybody wants to hear that or not, I don't mind, that's up to them. But if I can do it in a soft rubber bit, and this horse is wearing a real soft rubber bit, um, they're not one of our own manufacture, because I have to, when I get a batch made, for myself, I have to have like, I think it's 70, I can't remember now, made, and, you know, our bits are a little bit thinner, slightly thinner than they well, quite a bit thinner than these, and more flexible, but these are still very, very flexible. What Ree's going to do now is, um, just have a look there, Ree, we are, and just show them the bit in this horse's mouth. Keep the camera running on the pump. So this horse is known for having its problems, that's why it's here. 
this horse has got a bit of tooth, he's got a bit of age, i.e. it's like 14 or whatever, right? And he's come over from Holland, right? And he's got problems. So that's why he's here. But he's got no problems now. Um, see him standing there on a slack rein, he won't move until I asked him to. He's head straight, he's not um, you know, he's not looking around going to grab that grass on the side of the road, is he? He's just standing there because I've asked him to do so. So I treat horses like the motive power and everything else that's done with this horse, I do. You know, and that is the best way, the best attitude to have. You see this truck coming past? Not a murmur, it just stands there like that. Lovely. But when I say stand still, so he, didn't, he moved then, didn't he? I didn't scream and shout. I didn't hit him with a stick, I didn't go around and grab his head or do anything like that, I just sat here, let him walk on like there, look, can you see, let him walk onto the bit, I don't pull, my hands stay the same place, let him walk onto the bit, yeah, so he's checking himself, that may be hard to understand, but if I was to pull him back as he went to move, yeah, if I was to pull him back when he do that, that's me stopping him. If he walks forward, I'll keep my hands tight on my knees still. If he walks forward, he walks forward onto the bit, then it's entirely he's done it himself. And he'll learn better to respect the bit. Yeah? The rubber bit. Now, any bit you put in horse's mouth, um, any bit you put in there, you apply pressure. So, you know, you can't help but do that to steer and to stop and twist it. But what I like to do by the end of their training is have them very much on the voice. Anyone that has horse trained here will tell you, you know, they... Um, whoa! So see there, okay? Now, I'd give him a wall there, because that, that went... Now, what he's thinking, this dear little lad, he's not done anything wrong, really. And this should explain it to you one million percent. This horse made the decision, oh, that's what we've been waiting for, this noisy Land Rover to go past. Okay, we're all clear now, we'll go. Well, that's totally, if you let horse do that, that's totally ridiculous. Because what if at the very same time, there's a kiddie in a pushchair with his mum maybe, and or being walked along the side here. Any mortal thing you can think of, he can't see because he's blinkered up. So he walked forward and what's it? What if there was a car backing round? What if anything at all, anything at all, he'd go straight into it because he's made the decision. He cannot see. When you put blinkers on all, you take 80% of their vision away. Look in your books and you'd see it. With his near side eye, his near side eye this side, he can see his buttock this side with his head straight like that. That's what he can see. If you look in a book and understand the line of sight of all, well, we took 80% away. Well, they want some trust in you. And if you're going to let them make the deep like that, whoa, right, now I've got to stop him, right? Now I've got to pull on the reins and stop him. Come over, come over, right? I'm going to put him here. Whoa, stand still, stand still, stand still. He's got to learn to stand. So he was all right for a minute with a about five or six cars had gone past. I mean, you'll see on the film, it's running all the time. The Land Rover, when he went, he thought, that's it, then that's what we've been waiting for, now we'll go. No, you won't. You'll stand there. But I ain't shouted at him, I haven't smacked him. I'm trying to make him understand, when I asked you to do that, that's what you must do. When you ask a child to sit at the table until they've finished their dinner, that's what they've got to do. If you ask a child, right, half past six, your bedtime, they've got to go to bed at half past six. Now, this horse is going to scrape the ground in a minute, I would guess, because he's going to get frustrated. He'll think that this van may be the answer. So, is this what we've been waiting for? Um, this is what we've been waiting for, you know? Um, and if you try and read their body language a little bit, if you try and start, that, that's a subject all on its own. I'm going to do a series... A, a DVD on that, on body language, how I see it. You know, there's loads of things out there, but half of them, well, no. I would say a lot of them, they wouldn't be true for me, put it that way. 
So there's all sorts of body language in horse that you've got to look at uh, and understand and see. So he's standing there now. That's it. And you see that, and everybody says to me, oh yeah, oh do you sell horses, Mr. Hook? I'd love a horse, you know, I want one that's been there and done it and seen it, yeah? Well, here's one that's been there, done it and seen it, and he's here to be retrained, because all he is is a liberty taker. And that's what he was. When he come here, you wouldn't believe it. He, you could not stop him. He'd pull you up the road, he'd twist, he'd be over there, he'd be walking up that bank that side. He pour the ground, smash his feet down in sheer temper because you'd asked him to stand still. Well, like, he's a million times better than he was, but that don't make him right, does it? You know, because he's, whoa, stand. So, putting all between the shelves is nothing. Seriously, it's nothing. It's, you know, you can do that in a very short space of time. This is training a horse to work between the shelves, to be happy, to be safe, confident and happy. I'll say that again, safe, confident and happy. We're supposed to be the ones with all the brain. So it's our job to make him safe, confident and happy. And the only way you're going to do that is with discipline. Discipline is a dirty word in this day and age, a dirty word. But it's exactly what all this is about discipline you have to discipline yourself get up in the morning have a shower do your washing change your bed washing up clean the place get to work on time discipline yeah so if we're going to bring these dear little creatures these lovely little things into our world right i mean he can't make no sense of what we're doing here how could he possibly make any sense of it to him it's absolutely nonsense he'd soon be out there across them that land over there wouldn't he running free what he wants, the only thing he wants to stop him, you know, is a forest, a mountain, a swamp or a river he can't cross. Other than that, he wants to go anywhere he wants to go. So, if, well, I'll just put him back there. As soon as he's done what I've asked him, you see me relax the rain. So just at this moment in time, I don't know if you can hear it, and if Reed gets down, he'll stop, but he is grinding his teeth at the moment. So he knows he mustn't pour the ground, yeah, because we'll stay here even longer. So he's got to get rid of this frustration in some way. Now, so this one here grinds his teeth. You can hear it, he could grind coffee beans, you know what I mean? He's grinding his teeth there, no trouble at all, yeah really crunching them up yeah because he's not allowed to pour the ground because i've sat here for a long long time behind it every time he's poured the ground i've told him no i've put a little bit of pressure on the reins and went no don't do that and because i've stood here i've outlasted him if you like and it can be i think we was two hours 40 minutes if I yeah two hours 40 minutes I think Ree said she clocked it we just stand there till he stood quiet when he was pouring the ground so his bit of release for his frustration of having to stand here and behave himself is he's going to grind his teeth then you know now I can't stop him grinding his teeth but he'll stop himself doing it in a minute when he realises the world's a better place if you know you do what I asked you to do and they, then they become happy, their ears become soft, their bodies relaxed, they go up the road like you see the horses when they're finished, you know, and they're skipping along and they're just happy and yeah, I know where I am. You know, I know where my, you know, what I'm, is required. So I've got to stop him, yeah. Now I'll let him take a couple of steps in, I could have stopped him before, but I wanted to let him have his own way just for two steps, that's all, right? And then check him again, yeah. And I'm going to ask him to come over, come over, walk on, I'm going to stop him again, whoa, now this is properly frustrating for us, so he thought then, oh it was time to go, 
I made the decision, I went on a bit, he stopped me, right? Then he asked me to go on, and then he stopped me. So, he's had two lessons here, you will stop when I ask you to. And every time you win these little lessons, the better your horse will be. You know, but you, and also the other thing is, when people are messing about with horses, and trying to train them and stuff like that, the other thing you've got to remember, to go out on the road for the horses to be safe, confident and happy to be there is bloody hard work to train them up to that stand. There's nothing to do with putting them between the shelves. Horse ain't broke just because he goes between the shelves. You know, it's just not, it just don't happen like that, does it? The horse goes along in a trailer, but it don't entitle them to drive the motor that's pulling it, does it? So, well, baby, stand still. So there is what I've been looking for, and there you can see it. Can you see now? The horse is standing on three legs. See, zip drop down, he's standing on three legs. Now, no horse that stands on three legs with his leg relaxed like that has any intention at all of moving, because he wouldn't stand like that, would he? So he's gone, all right, Dad, I'll do as you've asked, I'll stand here, you know? And that's absolutely beautiful. So what I shall do in a minute, you know, I'll say we can move on, you know what I mean? But he will stand there until I tell him, but well, I haven't hurt him, have I? You've seen it with your own eyes. I haven't smacked him. I haven't had a curved chain and a big lump of metal in his mouth. I've got soft, pliable rubber. Stand. So we've got a big old lorry coming up here now, so I'm just going to leave him like that and let him come through. Uh, let him stand there while it comes through. It's brushing the edge the other side of the road. And then stand. So you can't hardly blame him. This is what I'm trying to say. I should have said this before. Whoa! Whoa! Come out on that road. Come over there. Whoa! Whoa! You can't hardly blame this horse. Because that's exactly what he's done for years. He's done what he wanted to. Then the people get cross when they don't want him to do it and he won't do it. Well, you ain't got no right to get cross with him. Because you've allowed him to do it. Not you, the person that owns him now, but before. That's what they've done. They allowed him to do what he liked. So he wasn't the engine anymore. Now he's driving the car. Gears. Now he's turning left or right. Now he's doing everything he wants to do. Well, that's no good on the public highway or in a in a school or anywhere. They've got to do what you ask them to do, and that is a prime example there. A prime example. Not a frightened of the lorry in any way, shape, or form. The lorry comes past. Oh, that's what we're waiting for. Okay, we can go now. Well, he don't make the decisions. He's got to stand. He's got to stand there till I tell him it's time to go. Now you say, well, that's a bit harsh. Well, then get them trained somewhere else. Because the only way they're going to be safe on it is to listen to what you ask them to do and to do it. Not only listen, but to carry out your wishes. Then if you're a good driver and you're sympathetic, which is the most important thing, to the horse, you've got the best driving horse you could ever have. They go anywhere. I'm just an ordinary fella that breaks horses. But, um, you know, my horses go in the heaviest of traffic, stand on the motorway bridge, go down and people go, wow, it's marvellous, it's wonderful. Not at all. Anyone can do it if you want to put the work in. And that's why people can't break their own horses. I'm not saying they don't. Obviously, people break their own horses and make a good job of it. But you don't hear about all the ones that went wonky, that didn't get it right. And, and the reason for that is because they don't want to admit it, they don't want to say it, no one would, it's embarrassing. So you've buggered horse up is what you've done, messed it up, because you haven't done it not knowing what you're doing. The problem is with that, it's done at weekends and evenings. So they go, so what we, stand. So see there, stand. Now this is massive for this horse, I promise you, I think we can probably, we'll have some old film of him when we first started doing him. He wouldn't do this. He would oh, he'd drive you around a bend. He'd wrench your shoulders. Wrench your, your arms out your shoulders. He would really, I mean, seriously. 
he'd be bad, he'd be all over this road dancing from side to side. So you can't smack them or hurt them or scream and shout at them. You heard me raise my voice. All I've done is stand. Well, that's all I've said to him. Yeah? So I don't, you know, I've got the patience, a lot of patience, but also because I do it seven days a week, whatever hours I work a day, 10, 12 hours a day, 14 in the summer, something but more than that sometimes as well. Um, I've got the time to do it. I can sit here now. If this was an evening or weekend and someone's trying to break the rules, how are they going to do it? And you can't do it in your, you know, on your own bit of land. Well, you do. You probably could start there doing it. But then you've got to come out on a public highway. All this traffic's got to move and he's got to stand here like a soldier. And that is training. Putting them between the shelves or on the pole or in the team is very little of it. Let's say it's 30%. Yeah? You've got another 70% is what this is. Hours of, you know, it might be a lesson. Don't mean to say... It's what they learn. It's not a, a period of time. Sometimes I've, I've been out three hours with us, just standing at a junction, seriously, where it wanted to go straight out in the traffic. Just standing there, and he's got so frustrated and upset, he's sweated. You know, he was sweating. We ain't gone anywhere, but he's sweating. It'd only been a mile down the road, and he'd walked all the way down, and then went straight to pieces. He could not stand it. So he's like a child without any discipline. You ask them to sit on a chair in a restaurant like that, and they're down and they're walking about and like that. And when you say, no, you've got to sit there, they start crying and getting miserable and irritable and, you know, show off and like that. Well, all ain't no different. You know, they're no different. And they do that because they, they can't... Uh, um, and even more so, we can't actually hold a conversation with them, can we? Well, I can... Oh, I don't mean that in a big-headed way, but I can to a certain extent because I can read his body language so well I know what he's saying to me. And he knows what I'm saying to him, not only with my voice, but my body language when I'm on the ground around him and my hands. Yeah? So, I'm sorry if I've rambled on a bit, but it's a passionate thing with me. This horse here, he's come to us, and the lady that owns him, nice lady, um says he finds it hard to keep the weight on him, yeah? Um, and we are maintaining just a bit under the weight when he come. Um, and hopefully now, the more content he gets, you see, and the less sweating he does because he's up tight, yeah? We can put the balances in to keep him right and everything like that and them sort of things. But uh, the more he gets, then he'll start to improve himself and he'll, be, he'll become a safe, confident happy horse. And even after all that standing and training, there he is, just walking down there on a slack rein. What can't speak, can't lie. So we've made him stand, so he's not going off at a rate of knots, is he? He's not going off soppy at all. We're going down this hill now, yeah? And I'm not pulling him, I'm not touching the brakes. And I want him to hold it back. I want him just to hold it back for me. And if he does, I'll be very pleased with him. I don't want him to break to a trot, I just want him to hold it. But as there's the rain slack laying right down by his, you know, good boy. I even didn't steer him straight on because he wanted to walk around that bit of poo on the road from other horse we've driven up here this morning. And there he is holding that back all the way down now. Got a bin parked here. I'm not driving him at all, so that surely must prove to you that he's listening to me. He's doing what I asked him to do on a slack rein. Now I can hear a motor car and we're on a dodgy bend. So what I'm going to do is just lift this rein here, just the weight of the rein. Look, can you see? I'm not pulling it. Can you see the weight? Look, just my thumb underneath it. You're not even holding it. 
and he's come over and that's with a rubber bit. So when people say, all these great people, experts, you must have a firm contact with your horse all the time. You must do that. And the reason is because they're frightened of the job. But if I can drive this horse up the road and all the other, well, thousands I suppose now I've done. Um, and when I was an ankle biter, a little kid, I used to, um, and I broke my first ones when I was, before I was 10, you know, cut the pony. Um, and I couldn't uh, put, you know, the, I couldn't get um, the bits and I didn't like them after seeing some horses bleeding in the mouth or sore in the mouth or you couldn't hold them anyway. So I used to take, it used to be a thing years ago, it was like a briefcase, but it, um, I think it was for sheet music and I used to have these leather cut, you know, and the handles on them, some of them was a metal bar running in a straight line, it looked like a curtain rail, you know, if you like, to keep all the music straight. And another one they had was two rings on either end of the bed, or one, you know, either end, sort of, I don't know, nine or ten inches wide on the top of the, um, like, briefcase music carry, you know, sheets of music, carrying sheet music. And it had a leather strap and it went backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards like that, maybe four or five times of, uh, you know, I would light, lightweight leather, not harness weight, lightweight leather. And around that was, they put a tube of leather, you know, another strip of leather and then sewed it. And they used to call it, so the sewing was hidden. Um... I think I might still have one laying around and they was like about six inches wide um, and I used to just cut them off the bags and use them as bits and horses loved it and in one of my old catalogue books you know where a company would supply like a wholesaler would supply a, a you know a, a sadly saddling saddleless shop or um, you know a tax shop as we call it now um, or harness shop they would have the catalogue and order the stuff and in there there's a page a whole page at the turn of the century with um, come over darling baby there's a good boy there's a whole page in there of leather driving bits leather driving bits no metal at all only the rings on the end the only bit of metal in there. there's nothing no metal inside the horse's mouth and there they are what's it there's even one in there in one of my old photographs, you can see the very same bit. That, come over, baby, good boy. The very, very same bit. And uh, there's a stallion wearing it with his roller on, you know, stallion roller and side reins. Yeah, biggish old, you know, good cob size coaching horse, really. Um, stallion, traveling stallion. About, I don't know, 1904 or something like that. Um, there's a picture of one, but you can see the bit because they had quite distinct cheek pieces. And when you, I've got a fella to, you know, make the picture better with the technology they have today. And then you can see the rubber, uh, the lever, I mean, as plain as you like, yeah. So, interesting, isn't it, all them things. So there he's going down here, he's not bothered about anything, and he's done exactly what I've asked him to do. Now, what more can I possibly do with yours? what we've got to do is now now we've got him getting him where we want him we can teach him a few other bits and then we've got to consolidate it then what will happen um, or it might even might even be that I'm busy doing another horse and Ree will take over and she'll consolidate it put it all together and then there'll be different hands and a different voice and he'll still do it the reason we do that, we do that 90% of the time anyway, but we do that is because they're not going to be burial, ain't going to be driving them when they go home, so they've got to get used to someone else doing it, you know, and that's um, that's what we want. So I'm going over these markings on the road here. I've got a little boy washing the car with his daddy down here, um, and he's got his ears pricked. What's that going on there? No problem at all. He's not shying away from it. He's got that washing down with the hose pipe. So, just went into a stroll past 
no rain on him, nothing to hold him up, you know, or walk. I just asked him to walk then at that point. Come on, get on with them wheels, please. We haven't got all day. They've got to be shiny by tonight. <laughs> Come on, boat. Hello, how are you? <laughs> That's the little children. They're not moved in long, that family. And I don't know whether they come from out of town, but when they see the horses come in there, like, they look really <laughs> stereoid. When I, when I first come up the road, they run back indoors. <laughs> come on, babe. So there he's going along there, no trouble at all. Now, you could say to me, well, why don't you, what are you going to do now? What I'm going to do now is go home. Because I'm very, 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 very pleased with what this horse has achieved today. It's a staggering amount for him because none of it makes any sense. He cannot understand why a human would ask him to stand still. He just can't comprehend it. He just thinks you're crackers. Whoa! See that? Stops on a button. And what I should do now is follow this car around. Right round behind, come round here, sidestep for me, look. Lovely. Thank you. And then I'm going to just ask him, walk, baby. Just walk. Just a gentle touch. Just look at his mouth there, look. I'm going to turn his head round. Can you see all the soap coming out his mouth? Lovely. So he's, and then people say, I heard that someone sent me something that was, or sent Ree, Ree was reading it to me. When it said about, oh, the reason a horse makes foam in its mouth and like that is because it can't swallow. I've never heard anything so stupid a remark to make. The only way they can make foam in their mouth is when the tongue's going backwards and forwards, yeah? Well, when all swallows, like yourself, all you've got to do is swallow and you'll feel your tongue go back in your mouth. Of course it does. Because whatever you want to swallow is pushing it down your throat. So, you know, what a silly thing to say. But we have a waiting list for horses to come in. It's not because I'm the wonderful great horseman and all that. It's not. Anyone can do what I can do. I suppose, obviously, over the years, I've gained a lot of time and, you know, spent round horses. And it's all I've done all my life. I've had to subsidise it with other jobs uh, and other, you know, things I've had to do to make a living. But if you turn the clock back, Perfectly seriously now, if you turn the clock back 100 years, there'd be thousands of men like me that understood horses and, and you know, like and when people say, oh yeah, but poor horses years ago, that's another load of big myth that wants blowing out the water. There ain't no one you're going to tell me, right, that yes, of course there were people that was cruel, definitely cruel, and there was people that didn't know and they was ignorant. And didn't understand, yeah, of balancing a load on horse, that type of thing. That's why the horse, you know, the London Harness Horse Parade was started to promote the well-being of horses, working horses. It weren't for, you know, private drive, it was working horses. And that's why it was started, a very, very good thing. Very good thing. So people took pride. But it was very few, you know, you saw there was this case, that case and that case. There was also tens of thousands of horses about, tens of thousands of horses about. When I was a little ankle biter, I, I went with a lad on a Sunday morning. We picked up a load of grub, um, you know, for the horses we had home like. And he's just a fella, I used to, I'd only be a five or six year old little ankle biter. And, we went to one place and I couldn't believe my eyes, you know. We went up this alleyway between two houses, a built up area, and at the back there was a stable and the horses were three stories high. And that's the truth, no, I never moved from here. Just like you parked cars in a multi story car park, they had the horses. And a little tiny yard there, enough room to wash them down, get them shod, and park a couple of trolleys or vans or whatever it might be. And there was loads of places like that. But there was lots of horsemen about them days. You know, lots and lots of horsemen. And that, sadly, is lacking today. 
So yeah, there was people that never looked after them, and there was a lot more that loved their horses, cared for them, and looked after them, and it was their livelihood. You know. I mean, it was the private driving people, uh, you know, more of that, like, um, when a coachman was doing a job, you know, they wanted bearing reins on them, they wanted their heads pulled right up in the air and pulled their heads in and up and in and up and in even more, and they'd be up Hyde Park down Rotten Row with their mouths bleeding. You know, read and study the facts and you find that's true. Um, bleeding. Well, we ain't got no right to treat horse like that, have we? That's just barbaric, isn't it? I mean, it's bad enough what we do now. Don't make no sense to him pulling his cart along, does it? He can't see any joy in this at all. Think, what are we doing this for? Keep making me stand still. But once he's broke and he's done, the queer thing happens. When he's broke and he's, and, he, and he's happy and he's safe and he's confident, he'll start enjoying it. And his towels will come up his quarters, you know, he'll carry his towel up and he'll flick his ears forward and he'll skip up the road for you and he'd be as happy as anything. Re, the other trainer here, that does all the filming and YouTube and everything like that, um, is, uh, you know, compared with me, you know, to very, very young, and she got a pony, and that is the most cantankerous, awkward pony I've ever met in all my life. I broke it and trained it for her, that's how we met, and, oh, God, George its name is, and I don't think it is St. George, it's more like the dragon. But anyway, the, um, the oh, cantankerous horse. I'll give, I'll give about the, whether the sun was shining. I'll give the, I don't want that grub, I want that grub. If you stand there, I'm not going to read it. Next day, it will snatch it out your hand. To whatever mood it is. Oh, I've never known all sorts of it, and I've known thousands. Proper cantankerous little thing. But now, see it go up the road brings a genuine tear to my eye to see that pony go up the road, you know. Reed takes it out when we finish work. It's, it's going to be used for all the small stuff. It's going to be another roly in miniature to do all the small stuff, you know. Um, anything from like Shetlands up, you know, to about 14 too. It will take care of all those, you know, be the schoolmaster for them if required. Um, but you see that pony got the road now it would bring a tear to your eyes seriously if you love horses because that pony went up there he oh, oh shit it's a, a mare argued all the time argued like to the point of ridiculous steady bro just walk now um no walk when i tell you so you know it'd be ridiculous argue about anything oh, anything you want to argue about if you said that's brown it would be white as far as if you said of course, lovely day to day. If it could talk, go. Oh, I hate it. You know, I think it's freezing. Whatever you said would be the dead opposite. Pony, I've never known a pony like it. But, and I broke it and trained it like that. And it stood there one day. And um, one of the three I've had in my lifetime has just stood there and kicked the car with one foot, right on the shelves. Kept kicking it. Didn't run away, do anything you like with it. Didn't do anything at all. Just get it off. I'm not doing it. So we had to conjole it and kid it. Unfortunately, when Re come down to uh, to see her pony, she understood or had an open mind then. Never done any driving before and had an open mind. And if you see the two of them go out now, it makes me feel 10 foot tall because they go out together, skip up the road, and she could, and you say, well, we shouldn't go out on our own. Well, that's another subject, another day. Yeah. Um, but uh, she goes up the road and that's as happy as a lark and if you're coming back home and I'll never drive it now I'll never drive the pony now because you know I think it's nice that the person that owns it drives it and you know gets builds a relationship always had a good relationship but now the relationship's changed dramatically because now once that it's incredible to watch once the once the, it's got the harness on, I'm in the cart, changes completely. Stands there like a sentry, like a soldier. Pass it, walk, it'll walk. And it would walk from here to Scotland if you asked it to. You asked it to trot, it do the same. You asked it to back up, you know, whatever you asked it to do, it does it just on the voice, on command. And I genuinely believe you could drive it without reins. You know, because it just do everything you want it to do. 
and I don't mean these people, there's one going around YouTube now, um, someone sent me, he's also been driven without reins, but if you look very carefully, very, very carefully, that might not be true. Might not be true, if you look at it really carefully. I'm not saying it is, because I've got no way of proving it, but it might not be true. But it looks all the world like it's going with no reins. So there's this fella now, so the problem we got now is keeping the weight on it. It's not underweight at the moment, you know, for structure, measurements, etc. We have a set of scales in the yard, so what, you know, for weighing the horses, which obviously what can't speak can't lie. So the horse goes on there, and I think it's dropped um, 28 kilo, I think it is. Ray would know, not me. But uh, 28 kilo, it's gone down. A lot of that, they all drop a bit when they come because travelling's a massive stress on horse. New environment, if you look and read your books and that, you'll see that a new environment and transport are the two biggest stresses on horse. So. But this is a lovely, lovely horse. And one time, I would imagine when it was a younger horse, before it was allowed to make all the decisions, walk up, bud. I should imagine, walk up, baby. So it's got something bothering it here now. I know what it is, it's this bit of water laid here, I can't quite comprehend it, you know, what's this, Baz? What's it now? The queer thing is, he ain't really put his ears back and asked me. He put his ears back and asked me, and he's realised what it is now and he's happy with it, you know. The next question he might ask me, his ear might come back, because I'm going to put him through it, you know, if I can. Come over, darling. Hey, good boy. Come over, baby boy. Yes, you are. Come over. Come over. Oh. Now the car on the other side of the road went through that wall so you could hear it make a little bit of a noise and he's a little bit like that. So them sort of things we got our iron out. But that'll come, you know when, you know, if you watch the films on YouTube, you see us drag a sheet of metal underneath the carriage and, you know, big plastic containers and some. Steady now, steady, steady, steady. So it didn't do what I wanted, so I'm just steady, 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 steady. Steady. Good boy. Steady, my baby. Yes, you are, you good baby boy. Yes, you are, my little darling. You just do what I tell you. There's a good boy. There's a good lad. And see if you watch the ears and learn from them old ear rolls. He's got one ear on me and one ear going forward. He's trying to pick up the noise of this vehicle that's nearby. He can't quite make out whether it's behind or in front, yeah? So that's what that's all about. And there'll be a car come past here, I guarantee you. I can't hear it, but it will be coming. There it is, one up the front. What I tell you. Now you think, how could he possibly hear that? Because he's got better hearing than we have. So he's heard that. He knows what it is now. There, I'll just double check it, do you see? Yeah. And doing the job. And I would think by the way his ears was working, there's got to be one behind us, I would think, that we'll see shortly, if that's true. So, see the ear roll up, pick it up, double check what you heard, yeah. So, that's, and that, so he thinks now, that's a good thing, now, well I've waited for them, I'll go. Steady, steady. That's it. So he made a decision. Right, they're gone now. We'll get on then, Dad. Will we? We'll trot home now. No, we won't. We'll walk, because that's what I've asked you to do. He don't want to walk now. He wants to trot. So I'm just keeping a little bit of pressure on him. Not pulling his head off. Still making foam in his mouth. His jaw's still moving about, you know, wriggling about. So we're not holding him back so he can't move his jaw. Like you see in the, you know, in the show ring when they're going around with some of them. There they are. I can't even move the jaw, the gag tight shut and then all the pressure and a curved chain up the back of their jaw and a bit in their mouth. Oh dear, I don't know. People, oh, I will say this briefly, people say, oh yes, but today, Mr Hook, you've got to realise, right, that there's so much traffic on the road and it's fast. Let me tell you something, what they've got to realise is, Back in the 30s, 20, 30, 40s, 50s, right, there was very few motor cars. I asked you, you know, I mean, just go back, look on history. And what they did, they broke down, they backfired, they had punches all the bloody time, right? 
there was a lot of steam steam powered equipment at work in just look back look at your history back in my lifetime I've seen steam shovels I've seen you know vibrating plates you know with, you know for thumping the road down and they you know they started them up and they um, they jumped up and down and a big old jetter come out the side of big air I mean there was great shovels and traction engines you know pulling stuff about steam actual steam rollers I mean that's what they say steam roller driven by steam so it had a bloody great whistle like going to one of them fairs and seeing the traction engines well there were steam rollers like that well they made these roads well there was horses on a bloody road when well, there must have been they coped with it all because they had horsemen and that's what we've lost is the ability to understand horses you know the, the time the effort that's put in and the experience of older men that would say to you you know if you could get one to tell you they'd say to you like that you know and watch him do that boy watch him do that you know you see a man out with a pair of horses working on his own in a field there and right alongside him there's a traction engine working in the field you know there'd be a big traction engine drying a combine harvester and all the horses be standing around it you know bringing up the stuff to be go through the threshing machine and they might take the corn away well they stood there and done it didn't they so you know that was far more to cope with far more to cope with than ever they get today when there ain't horse in this country I wouldn't think it'd be bloody hard to find horse I've never seen a car I've never seen a lorry, never heard them, it'd be old, wouldn't it? You try and think where would they have to be? Even on Dartmoor, there's plenty of people around there in the summertime. So it'd be very, very rare. So all she's are brought up with it. These all she's were would be introduced to it, you know, they huh. So it's a silly thing to say that, you know. All she's cope with anything if they're treated with respect, kindness, right? And firmness but firmness right or discipline does not mean you hit smack or hurt discipline is no that's what I'd like you to do and that's what you're gonna have to do and when you know you sit there and finish your dinner or you sit there till everyone else is finished theirs then you can get down from the table and them old, they're our old-fashioned I know they're old-fashioned today but Discipline, everybody's got to be disciplined. You've got to be disciplined to get out of bed and go and earn a living, haven't you? That's discipline. So, anyway, that sounded like a bit of a lecture then. <laughs> but I feel strongly about these dear things. They're lovely creatures and they want treating with respect. Come over there, my baby. There is a big thing for this horse, right? We're going to open this gate with the automatic opener. <laughs> so, I want it to stand here. Um, and when the gate opens, it swings open once we get the push the electric button. Stand. Whoa. So, see that? There's a prime example of he ain't going to stand, is he? So, he's going to just stand over here now until I tell you different. He's even pushed that shaft of that into the fence. Am I shouting? Am I screaming? Have I told Reed to get down and get to his head? Have I told him anything? No, I ain't. Whoa. But I'll make him stand there and he will stand there whether he wants to or not because he thinks it's all over now let's get back I've got to go and have my tea but he's got to do it in the right manner stand still I raise my voice that's all I'm going to do I'm not going to go and hit him put a bearing rein on him change it for a big lump of iron in his mouth with a curb chain so I can really inflict some pain on him because don't make no mistake I've told you what to do put your hand up like that put the bit there the curb chain underneath then give it a twist a Liverpool bit that'll bring tears to your eyes so stand still baby stand that's it now when you stand there quiet for a minute and he don't pull on me hands and you can see the reins just start to move now so I've kept my hands still he's walked onto the bit He's going to go right. If I turn my head this way, perhaps I can get away with it. I'll just check him gently. Whoa! Stand still. What I can't do in this situation 
that I'm in here, which I would like to do, which I can't do for safety reasons, is I've, I could get him to come back a little tiny bit, but I've got to be very careful about saying to him come back and asking him to back up because obviously the car is going to go out in the road. So, you know, you've got to be a bit sensible. So, we've got him to take one step back and he just stand there like that now till I can let these reins go slack and then we'll take a step forward and if he goes on too hard, if he pulls on too much we'll stop again and we'll stop ten times when we get to that wall over there to tie him up and that's what I'm saying to you, comes back to what I'm saying to you try and do it weekends and evenings, hard work there's that leg, did you see, just going to go at rest then he moved it in, to, you know, put it back by the side of that other leg, you know so I'm going to stand here now and I don't care if it's pouring down a the rain there's one film on there where I you know I'm out with also one stand still a grey pony and it's absolutely falling down like stair rods I mean it's seriously heavy heavy rain and I'm soaked through to the skin but I won the day I didn't win the day out of beating him and pulling his bloody head off with curved chains and great Liverpool bits and all that nonsense well, didn't do it like that just done it with patience, kindness, but firmness. Now, can you see this horse is whoa, relaxing now? Come back, and as soon as I let that, that come off, yeah, he said, No, I'm gonna move. Well, he ain't. So, now can you see the reins going slack? Look, you see him, yeah, stand still. So, I just give him my voice, stand still. And I'll tell you, I don't care how long I stay here, and we'll keep the camera running. We might have to make this film into a series, you know, like a three or four. Because of the time I've been talking, Rhea will be ever so pleased when she got made a filmer. Um, so, there you are. Whoa! So, before we moved, then I checked him. You notice the other times I let him go, and then said, No, you don't do that. So this time as he went to go, I just said, no, you don't do that. You're not going to do that. You're going to come back and what's it? And he's learnt this horse as well. A lot of them do this. They tuck their head down. Yeah. Um, and they tuck their, their chin right into their chest. Yeah. That's better. That's lovely. You stand there with your head up like that. That's not what I want. Now, well, the reason they do that is they do it because you're pulling the bit or what their weight they're putting on it, is pulling it down out of their mouth as opposed to up onto their bars. You know, obviously if they get their head down low and turn it in, their lips would be towards the horizontal, you know, horizontal rather than the vertical, yeah? But he's standing now, his ears are softening. And as soon as he does what I want, I'll be over the moon. So what I'd like to see before we move, it's a time thing really, but what I'd like to see is his leg go at rest. Now he's just testing me again, see if I'm, yeah. And now he's going to stamp his feet, yeah. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to shout and scream at him. I said to you, he grinds his teeth, and he used to stamp his feet all the time. He'd dig a trench here. Stand. Stand. So now he thinks, well, I'll go this side. Whoa. Stand. And I won't let him get away with it. I don't care if he pushes, pushes this in the fence and smashes all my fence. I still won't let him get away with it. If you look down here, you can see the marks he's just made on the fence here with the carriage, pulling it against it. Don't care. He has got to stand here. Stand! He has got to stand until I say he can go. When he's done that, now he's gained a bit of ground here now and he's moved in but as I just said to you to back out here would be dodgy it's not so much that obviously the cars are coming down from this way it's not that but if we back out and then a car swings across the road to avoid us we're on a bend and therefore you can have the problem of you know the other car and you cause an accident well that's just not on is it so we've got to stay here now and as long as we win the day, it doesn't really matter. But if we back him up now, he might make two or three steps in, you know, when the car's coming and you can't, um, 
you can't run the risk of interfering with the you know the traffic on a public highway you've got to do it also so whoa whoa so see that now i'll stay here i keep saying that and this film will be as boring as hell but that's what it's all about so as soon as he gives me a slack rein and he stands quiet yeah with his head up a little bit i don't really want to dare would do oh now you see the the effort he put into moving is reduced he's not fighting me as much as he was a little bit for oh he's going to keep stopping me i'll let him give up in a minute well that's what i want him to do you know so now he thinks i'll go over here then and if i come over here and then i can charge forward and then i'll get away with it then no you won't you'll stand there So he's put his arse right over one side of his quarters, I should say, over one side. And the shaft on his shoulder is the other side. He'll probably try the other way yet. But I'll just sit here with the pack. Pack up now, good boy. Stand still. And you see that, look. Whoa, I was going to let him go then, but he moved. He had a nice slack rein, yeah? And he just stood there for a minute or two. But we'll stand here all day if we go. So there we are. His head's come up. He's standing quiet. Yeah, whoa. He ain't got the fight he did have a few minutes ago. So, ah, that's it. Now he's got his leg at rest. Can you see it? Remember what I said to you before? Now he can walk. Walk, baby. And that is the training. That's training. Ain't nothing to do with putting them, well it is obviously something to do with putting them in shop, but it's a minor, minor part of it. That's what you've got to be able to do. And to, well, and to do that is experience. And it does take a long time. It take, you know, it's taken me years to try and get it right. And please believe me, I don't get it right now. I'd like another lifetime to get it right. Now he ain't standing, is he? He wants to go up to there. Because he knows, no, I don't stop here. I'll move up about another... Uh, 18 inches and then you'll come off and hook me on the wall while you take this off of me and this on it's not going to have me tea no you'll stand there all right so even that now i'll drop these reins and if he'll stand quiet that'll do me and if you look over here now you'll see that this foot is up i don't know if you can see um, that one there is taking no weight right if you know if we was off the side of the thing you'd see that you'd see daylight under the shoe so there he is now standing there quiet he'd like to go up 18 inches because that's where he thinks he should stop or he's been used to stopping but no we're not and we've had a row and we've had a fight and an argument haven't we but there he is standing quiet and now he's brought his head up lovely he's no longer oh he's down again all right then go down again So this is, you know, what you're paying for. You, you know, when horses she's coming out with, you know, more up the more expensive end, obviously, than a lot of people charge. But this is what we do. You now they, we don't knock them about. No need for it. We don't. Uh, what's it? But discipline, most definitely. But it's all once you come off the voice. You don't want to be enforced with anything. And I know I keep on about, you know, having a great lump of iron in the mouth and a curved chain. What do you think have a curved chain? Put it up your arm like I've said. Now, oh, see, now he's yielded to me. He's come back now. Look at this foot. I mean, if I take this. See there, the leg at rest. That's all I want, and a slack rein. And what I'm going to do now, just to prove the point, I'm going to drop the reins there.
lovely boy, he really is, you know, it's just that he's been allowed to, he's done a bit of film work in his time, he's just going to upload his camera, come over, now that's his mate, Ree there holding the camera and he said, Ree, you will come and do this with me, because he's getting on my nerves, he's <laughs> talking, <laughs> that's a good idea. Yes, you are. There you go. That's training. That's hand.